Daddy Ernie, thank you so much for joining me today. Really glad to have you. And we've invited you along, really, because we want you to tell us a bit about a very famous person who lived here in Harrow. We're celebrating our Windrush um, generation. Mm. And uh, we came to understand that a very famous reggae singer, mm. Gregory Isaacs, yeah. lived here. Yeah. And I know you know a little bit about him. Mm. So I want to ask you a few questions, but do feel free to, to um, put in anything else you think might be interesting for us to know. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, I do know that Gregory was born in Jamaica. Mm. When did he come to the UK? Well, I think the first time Gregory came to the UK was uh, probably in the latter part of the 70s. Okay. Um, not living, but came to perform. Um, and he was back and forwards, back and forwards from the first time, obviously, because, you know, it was Gregory Isaac. Yeah, yeah. And um, he performed here on many occasions, not several, many occasions, and he would just pop in <laughs> like the artists of that time used to do because England was their second home. The Harrow Connection came a lot later. Okay. Yeah, it came a lot later, the Harrow Connection, um, where he actually stayed in um, Weald Lane, which okay. is not too far from here. Okay. Um, 59 Weald Lane. Um, they've, uh, and that is where the blue plaque is erected. Because they've got a blue plaque for Gregory okay, there. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they've got a blue Wonderful. plaque for Gregory. He, if I remember rightly, he appeared in a film called Rockers. Mm. And he played the character of Cool Ruler. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that nickname stood yes. for a long time yes. but he also had another nickname mm. lonely lover yeah where did that come well from? lonely lover was the name of one of his song i'm a lonely lover okay so i would imagine that it came from that song um because he was not a lonely lover that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> you could tell by the songs that he sung he was not a lonely lover um but um we knew him effectually as the cool ruler you know, okay. the, the, the coolest of all. And in that era, as most of us know, mm. um, when people came to live and settle here, um, life was tough yeah. for, for them. Yeah. How, how was it for Gregory? How, obviously, because as a performer, you yeah. know, people love to come out and watch you perform, but then once you're not on the stage, yeah. it's like you become like everybody else. How, how did he deal with... No, well, you see artists like them... Um, like Gregory, the lights of Gregory, when they were here in the UK, there's always a lot of people around. You know, Gregory used to fly in and you see the cool ruler and all these people who managed to get a stay here in the UK would come out of the woodwork and all these boys and all that would come out of the woodwork. And it's basically like, you know, anything that they wanted, they would get. Mm. So it was, I don't think it was, in, it was probably harder in Jamaica than it was here. Because um, Jamaica, you know, as an artist, you're responsible for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People expect yeah, yeah. Um, certain things. Whereas here, you know, he could more or less just go about his business mm -hmm. and do what he's doing. So we're going to hear one of his songs later mm. on um, as part of the whole presentation. Yeah, which one? Number one. <laughs> oh. It's an arrangement that we've, we've done. One of the things I noticed... Um, when I was listening to a lot of Gregory's music, when I realised that he'd been a resident in this in this area of London, mm. I then wanted to do something from his collection. And uh, so listening, listening, because obviously he's a soloist, yep. trying to adapt something like that for a choir is a bit different. Mm. Um, and I came up with, with number, number one. one. But what I realised in a lot of his songs, he doesn't have loads of backing. It really was just yeah. him. It was just him. Yeah, he sung and he done backing vocals and harmonies, the whole lot, like they used to do in those days, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, when he was on tour, then he had that, but a lot of his songs in the studio and that, if you listen to them, he's doing the majority yeah. of songs, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was reading somewhere that there's like f over 500 albums. That's what we know of. I'd imagine there's probably more. Yeah, he made like a phenomenal goodness. amount yeah. of uh, tunes. 
number one is the one we're going to hear, but mm. name me some of his other. I think there was one more that I recognised. Oh. So I, I was saying, you know, where was I <laughs> when, when Gregory Isaacs was around? I clearly wasn't listening to the right stuff. But I do remember Night Nurse, I think, yes. was one of his Yeah, well. because that was commercial and you yeah. before he'd done it and yeah. it became big hit. But, um, you know, I was fortunate. My earliest introduction to Gregory Isaac was um, an album called Extra Classic which was one of his first albums um, to really hit. Um, and on there, you've got songs like Extra Classic, um, Once Ago, Black A Kill Black. It was kind of revolutionary, because he's very revolutionary in the early part of his career. Mm. Um, and then you went on, so you've got that selection. Uh, one of the first Lovers Rock tunes to cut that came here to the UK was Gregory Isaac, My Only Lover, okay. which was one of the first Lovers Rock tunes I ever bought. I won't tell you when. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Okay. Um, and then he went on the other, other a time where he was signed to Virgin Records, which um, at the time was a major. And um, mm. there, that gave us Soon Forward, Tune In Till The Morning, John Public, uh, Cool Down The Pace, uh, Night Nurse came from that era as well. Um, and many says that was his most productive era. Okay. Um, with Virgin Records, yeah. it was phenomenal. But um, there was also his own cash and carry label that he had for himself, um, and he had some great tunes on that. Set the captive free, Storm, Storybook Children. Uh, so yeah. you know, it's, it's we could sit here all day and, and name Gregory it. Isaac songs. So before I before we we close off, tell me if you can. What would be his legacy? If you think about Gregory Isaacs, what's his legacy in terms of, yeah, what mark has he made? Well, the, the, the catalogue of songs that he's left behind, um, you know, and they keep a show in Jamaica for him every year called Red Rose for Gregory, wow. which was one of his big songs as well. Um, and amazing turnout, everybody turns out red got a rose it's round about valentine so okay, you know the deal right, you know okay, what i mean yeah, yeah. um and um that's a phenomenal occasion as well you know you've got the greg Isaac foundation okay. which um linda the wife here started which um spans africa around the world and it, it's growing and um the there's actually there's a few singers that when they're singing they mimic Gregory. Okay. And I've been to places where I've come in and they're singing on stage and I'm going, hold on a minute. <laughs> They've got it down to a T. You know, he's one of them artists there. Okay. You know, very much people want to sing like Dennis Brown or they want to sing like Marley or whatever. But these Gregory Isaac people from Africa, they're on it big time, man. So okay. that's another one of his legacies as well. He's inspired and a next generation. Um, his influence has been okay. amazing. Wonderful. Thank you, Daddy Ernie, for mm. joining me and giving me a bit more of an insight mm. into Gregory Isaacs. I hope you enjoy what we've done with yes. number one. Yes. And uh, long may his legacy continue. Most definitely. 